Hey guys, and welcome back to Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. It's time for the final level of Act 2 of the game, Deadpool. It's going to get meme-tastic up in here. Yay, it's the part we've all been waiting for. Yeah, we might as well just end the part, end the playthrough right here, because we're not going to top this. Yeah. <laughs> Hellfire commentaries is over. <laughs> oh my god, Brain Scratch's secret plan comes to the fore. Make him play a game so fun that nothing will ever be able to beat it. Good stuff. <laughs> okay, I have to get this like out of the way straight off the bat. This is not how Ultimate Deadpool acts, personality-wise. Ultimate Deadpool is kind of like your bog-standard assassin. Not really all that zany, but he is just as insane as his like other incarnations, like he loves to kill and such. For Shatty Dims, they've basically taken Ultimate Deadpool's design, visually, and combined it with like the 616 or whatever personality that Deadpool is more known for. And honestly, it is a vast improvement, and it makes this level so much fun. Because even when you pause the fucking game, he'll be talking to you. Well, you know... Isn't uh, Deadpool, like, it, wasn't it originally, like, done by the same person who uh, who did Deathstroke, I, I believe? Something along those lines? Or maybe it was some kind, of, some kind of a reference, one or the other? I think one was a parody of the other, or at least like Deadpool a... is a parody of Deathstroke, yes. That's how he was originally uh, set up. He was made by Rob Liefeld, and uh, really he was just kind of there... You know, when Rob Liefeld did it, I'd say during the Joe Kelly run is when Deadpool kind of really took a life of his own, where he really fleshed out the character, gave him some legitimate characterization, but also, you know, defined a lot of his humor, things like that. Uh, these modern uh, Deadpool interpretations, especially the one that's going to be in the movie when that comes out, is more based on writing by Daniel Way, who, by the way, uh, when he wrote fucking Deadpool, the video game, it was such a try-hard, unfunny piece of shit that I can't believe people liked it. I'm just going to get this off my chest right now. You know, just to get that out of the way. But for the most part, um, I otherwise don't really know a lot about Deadpool. I admit, I don't like this design as much as 616 version, but otherwise, meh. Now what am I gonna tell its Using the classic Ultimate Spider get up here, I love this shit, you know. It's got the, the bright colours, the big eyes, it's all good. But you've still got the fucking purple symbiote tentacles coming out of it, which ruins the whole illusion of the costume. Wait, couldn't the Venom symbiote do that anyway? <sighs> That's entirely besides the point, madam. All right. But yeah, you know what? I kind of agree about the Deadpool game, for the most part. It had some really brilliant moments oh, yeah. mixed in. <laughs> but for the most part, it kind of felt like Deadpool was playing it safe with his humor, doing stuff that, that, that you know, you'd, you'd expect most people to find funny rather than uncomfortable, yeah. which is kind of the opposite of, of what I associate with Deadpool's humor. Uh, he don't. He doesn't have minions. No, no. In this level, he has fanboys. His fanboys are gonna try and beat up Spider Man. That was great. <laughs> oh man. So it's like if any popular LP -er had like their own little secret level. My fans will defend me. Now you see what this is. This is the kind of humor that I that I associate more with Deadpool than the stuff that that happened in the actual Deadpool game. Yeah. Although not, not to say that this that that this Deadpool level doesn't overdo some sting, things. For example, uh, when you pause the game, if you leave it paused for any length of time, Deadpool will taunt you in the on the pause screen uh, while you're on this level. And at first, it's funny, but then he just won't shut the fuck up. Yeah. Also, he runs out of lines really fast. So. Yeah. So yeah, he goes. He cycles through the same small number of lines pretty quickly. The other cool thing about this level, though, is how open it is. It's yeah. got this. This one level feels sort of like a small-scale version of uh, Spider-Man 2, in a way. And, well, I guess Ultimate Spider-Man as well, if we want to get specific. Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously not so much a city uh, structure, but it, it feels very sandboxy. Yeah, sure. And, and that's a nice change of pace after, the, after all the levels up to this point. Because you get like the the feeling of freedom, like swinging around this vast environment, and then you get Ultimate Spider-Man's like carnage-driven gameplay. You know, so you know, apt given that the final level will feature carnage, uh, you know, ultimate-wise. But um, this is very fun, and it's just like the setting, like these oil tankers. It's just kind of I don't know. I, I haven't really seen many in video games. I'm sure they exist, but I haven't played many video games where you're bopping around on one, except, I don't know, maybe Goldeneye, but maybe I'm remembering wrong there. But it's just a really fun level, you know, lots of great humor, you know, Spider-Man and Deadpool are just, like, trying to out-quip each other, and you're going around destroying TV cameras, so even the objectives are zany. 
What, like, Tony Hawk Pro Skater level did they take this area from? Because I could have sworn I did some skateboarding challenges on some of these ramps over here. Or was that the bonus one from the Metal Gear Solid game? I think it was. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear Solid... <laughs> <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 2, Tanker. Thank you, Aldwing. I knew I was forgetting something really important. Ah, uh, that was the one I was thinking of when you brought up skateboarding. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it, yeah, well, I, I, you know, to be fair, the only reason I thought about that, the only reason I remembered it existed was because Johnny did his Metal Gear Solid 2 review a couple days ago. <laughs> so now you know when this was recorded. <laughs> well, we like to date our stuff, we don't give a shit. I'll date my fucking birth if I need to. 24th of November, 88, I think you'll find. My birthday was not too long ago, as of this recording. I just want to get that out of the way so you guys know how great I am. <laughs> I love all those photos you took of holding the lights over the wrong way around. That was awesome. Yeah, I had a bit. I had a blast. I love that bright yellow game show microphone that Deadpool has in this. <laughs> I heart Deadpool. <laughs> no, it's I heart Deadpool. Uh, you could take the comedy as like really corny and cheesy, but I think it struck the right balance of zany in this. It was like stupid and silly without being too obnoxious. And you've really got to be careful when you write for a character like Deadpool, because it's so easy to just go over the top and kind of ruin it. Deadpool's normally quite crude, and a lot of it is kind of sweary humour. They, ha You have to strike it so carefully when you've got to do a more family-friendly version of that, and I think they have done it very, very well. I, I think I prefer, like, silly Deadpool to crude Deadpool, honestly. Like, have him kill people by all means, but uh, I, I just don't really care for that kind of like dick and fart humor honestly i think i like the deadpool in this game more than uh you know like i mentioned earlier the way pool you know that kind of writing because in that one that was just trying way too hard to get a laugh here it's more pulled back and restrained which i can appreciate i also know the north does a pretty good job as uh ultimate deadpool here mm-hmm well, Nolan North just does an awesome job at being Deadpool, because, I mean, even in the kind of Deadpool game, he does an excellent job there. Obviously, the actual game itself is a complete other thing than the script, but I think he does an excellent job as Deadpool, no matter what. Wasn't he Deadpool in one of, like, the X-Men, um... I don't want to call it a cartoon, it may even be, like, a Hulk cartoon. It's like, hey, uh, there's something, I shot you. He was in, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, I think. Ah, can we get some fact checking here, Richie? I don't want the to actual start. cartoon. I mean. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Actually, I think that was Will Friedle. Wait, what are you talking about exactly? If you're looking for a Deadpool cameo, yes, he was in Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, and he was voiced by Will Friedle. Okay, well, whatever he was voiced by. Okay. Richie, you got the facts. What's the deets here, bro? Right. So Nolan North has voiced Deadpool in Marvel vs. Capcom 3: Fate of Two Worlds, uh, Spider-Man's Shattered Dimensions, Hook vs. Wolverine. That's what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, that's the cartoon I was talking about. Um, Marvel Superhero Squad Online, Lego Marvel Superheroes, Deadpool, and apparently a thing called Pinball FX. Two. Also, while we're on the subject, uh, some of Deadpool's fanboys in this level are voiced by John Cassier, who, as we discussed in the last part, voiced Scorpion 2099 in this game, and he also previously voiced Deadpool in X-Men Legends and Marvel Ultimate Alliance. <laughs> Dynamic entry! Man, he is shiny. I'm not sure how I like this edgy redesign for Spider-Man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that one, like, Deadpool comic thing where he's riding the subway and um, <laughs> this little girl comes up to him and he's like, why are you taking the subway, Spider-Man? He's like, oh, I ain't got really any, like, money and whatnot to take a cab or whatever. <laughs> and she goes, asks her mum for money and comes back and gives him, like, a fiver or something. <laughs> 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 uh, it's just amusing. Deadpool, he's got his little, like, knives and whatnot. He's got his guns with the shooty-shooty-bang-bang bang functions all intact and the like. And he's still got fanboys that he likes to call in. Watch out for the explosives. Don't be a dumbass like Dumbass64. The Deadpool design originally was very 90s in that, you know, he uses the two katanas, he has the big lifo guns, things like that. I think here, you know, going with the knives, I kind of like them a bit better than the katanas. They don't feel as... Cliche, you know? Also, if I want to go for like a cartoon character who has two katanas, I'll stick with Leo. Thank you very much. Of course. Weirdly, like, usually enemies who um, 
you need to QTE. They'll be like out of reach. He, here he just kind of stands around, but you just gotta look for him. Mechanics wise, Deadpool's bosses aren't really anything special, but the level that leads up to it is just so much fun that by the time you get to Deadpool, you don't really care as much. Yeah, pain factor. More like fun factor. There you go. Game Pro lives. It, it, it's it's just that it's just that level of average that you know you don't really necessarily mind that it's nothing special when you get to it because it's not a it's not like a slightly tedious boss at the end of a really tedious level or anything like that. And unlike in 2099, facing down hordes of bad guys here is fun because you've got the Venom symbiote and you've also got Angry Time. And you also haven't been doing it for the entire level. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, this level. You know, I played this. I played the levels in order when I first played this game as well, much like we were doing in this playthrough. So when I got to this level, it was immediately after the 2099 level. So for that reason, just because of the structure, it was it was a breath of fresh air for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deadpool out. What a nerd. <laughs> Jet skiing Spider-Man. <laughs> wow, he has a second tanker? Jesus Christ. I guess all this comes from, like, merchandising or whatever. That's true. Deadpool probably has a ton of merchandise with his name on it. Uh, he would probably legitimately have Deadpool the flamethrower, I think. <laughs> yeah. For ages free and up. Well, considering he has fanboys who are willing to risk their lives for him... I think he probably is making enough money to have, like, three oil tankers and just everything under the sun. I, I just love how it flat out says, oh, these aren't minions, they're my fans. Get them, fans! <laughs> Can our fans do that in case I ever need minions, I wonder? Oh, uh, well, get yourself a level, get yourself a persona, and we'll talk about it. Oh, that's going to take a while. We have to put in a lot of time at the Cracker Factory. <laughs> oh, man, I, I love this dialogue. Gift shot. I love the designs on their bats, too. Yeah. It's like, imagine that swinging towards your face. It'd be quite something, all right. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, right? Do, 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 do. Turn around. Let me look at how it fits you. Yeah. Well, we're just passive bystanders here. Just enjoying a friendly conversation between goons. <laughs> That's the kind of Spider-Man humor I look for, where it's not just like the hero who's funny, it's also like the B characters, or the minions, they get in like a few chuckles every now and then as well. Yeah, I like it when everyone's funny because of their personalities and how, you know, they're comedically exaggerated. That's fun to me. Even the straight men, like, um, I guess you could say Wolverine, when he's playing off someone like Deadpool, gets a laugh just because he has to put up with so much bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know that that's uh that's the kind of thing that I that I enjoy Spider-Man for. Oh. Like you know, as comics have evolved, a lot of comic book stories and heroes have gotten really super serious, and Spider-Man is honestly no exception. But when I think of Spider-Man, it's not those super serious storylines and plot twists that I think of most. It's how much fun the whole thing is. I, I think that's why I talked to it like I did because. Uh... I think I may have mentioned this in other places, but I'm arachnophobic. I fucking hate spiders. But Spider-Man has always, always been my favorite superhero, which is odd, given the circumstances. But uh, I, again, the fun factor kind of overrides everything, I guess. Well, I mean, I suppose it's because Spider-Man's always fun. Generally, he's always quite relatable. I mean, the whole Peter Parker thing. He's not exactly a huge, butch, kind of majorly buff character, so... Just the spindliness, almost, and the dorkiness just makes him relatable to people, so I think that's why he is such a kind of favourite. I think for me, uh, you know, my favourite, uh, uh, for the most part, I don't read a lot of mainstream comics, I don't really like it, because of, again, all the serious shit, all the continuity you have to follow, but my favourite comics have always been, like, uh, actually the kid stuff. Marvel Adventures, uh, you know, Batman yeah. Adventures, things like that, because uh, not it's not just, you know, they're all ages, but, you know, you can have comics be fucking fun again without having to need to piss off fanboys every month with your stupid events and other bullshit in order to, you know, sell fucking comics. You know, they can actually be good, fun stories that I don't want to hate myself after reading. Well, that's not to say Spider-Man isn't guilty of that himself. You know, <laughs> well, that's what, I, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Spider-Man has definitely been guilty of that. 
a spider bus, a superior spider bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, like when you when you're past that bullshit, you know, Spider Man in particular can be really fun. That's why my favorite uh, Marvel hero is actually like the movie Iron Man, because oh, yes. you know, uh, uh, who played him in the fucking what was his damn name? I can't remember. You know who plays him in the movies? Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, 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 that guy. Like, he put that really kind of funny, kind of jackass spin on it. And that's the kind of, you know, comic stuff I like. I mean, sure, he's a character. Sure, he has flaws. Sure, he has serious moments. But, you know, he's just so fucking entertaining to watch. And I like it when my heroes are like that in comics, personally. The other thing about that, though, is that when, when you have, a, a, you know, a more lighthearted overall tone and you try to do serious stories, what it winds up doing is it balances itself out in such a way that when the serious stuff does happen, it means more to the reader or the viewer. Yes, yes, per perfectly, like, summed up there, I think. It makes the bad moments have that much more impact, like Gwen Stacy dying, um, like Aunt May, like, almost dying, I guess. Several times. Yeah, getting married to Doc Ock, that was a bad one. Although it sure didn't save that whole mess with Mephisto, did it? <laughs> uh, never does. One more day, one more day. Was it one more day? I forget my arcs. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. Uh, all I know, uh, I like. I've never read that myself, so I, I like. I'm saying right now, I'm not. I'm not jumping to any personal judgments about it. But I hear so many bad things about that arc. <sighs> well, speaking of arcs, I guess I should uh, bring up how fucking ultimate. Spider-Man died in the, the original Ultimate Comics. He took a bullet for Captain America, which I think came from the Punisher, but don't quote me on that. And then he had to fight off like most of the Sinister Six, if not all, and uh, Goblin was there giving it all this. And then he just died saying, look, I'm, I saved you, Aunt May and MJ and everyone else, but not you, Gwen, because you're kind of like Carnage now. And then he died. Boom. Hey, he went out like a boss, though. Like, he, he had a really good kind of important, he was kicking ass until the very end kind of death, and that's respectable at least. Oh yeah. And then they kind of brought him back and it wasn't very satisfying, and I'll be honest, I'm not really happy that they did it, because for once, a death in a comic had some sort of impact on me, and just had to retcon it, didn't you? You couldn't let Miles have his own fucking continuity free of any baggage. The kids straddled with a boring story anyway. I'm sorry, but I like Miles Morales as the char as a character. His costume's cool. His powers are pretty neat. But he has no rose gallery worth a shit. And they've really kind of undersold or like underwritten his particular version of Spider-Man. Mm, yeah, that's true. It winds up when that happens, the character just winds up being a gimmick. How did they bring Peter back? Because I didn't read that. Oh my god, I, I actually can't remember. <laughs> Is that <laughs> bullshit, huh? Let's just say like nano machines, son, or whatever. Fuck it, fair enough. People were saying like, oh, maybe it's the chameleon. You know, maybe it's the chameleon doing his identity kind of shit. Maybe it's just a clone, because God knows clone shit pervades even the Ultimate Universe. But no, it's the real deal. And then him and MJ run away, they kind of like elope or whatever, and, you know, Miles becomes the proper Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, that's that does sound disappointing. And then the universe has kind of blew up, and uh, all the Ultimate shit got mixed into 616, and now it's a completely new universe. I'm not even sure if the original Ultimate Spider-Man is uh, still with us. I know Miles is. Oh, well. Mm, fuck him, right? And, you know, the only time that uh, that I can remember a, a legacy a, a legacy naming, like a, a new character taking over an old superhero name, ever mattering at all, uh, is uh, Batgirl. Uh, and that was entirely because they went and crippled Barbara Gordon. But even that, like, when the new 52 came up, they just casually undid. That was so lazy. Yeah, at least, yeah, they just said, oh, there was this off-screen miracle, um, uh, operation going on because we want the Killing Joke to be part of the new canon, but we also want Barbara Gordon. So they wanted to have their cake and eat it, too, and it was just, bleh. Wasn't, like, the new Batgirl, like, super edgy as fuck, and then now they're doing it, like, super happy and shit? Like, I don't read those, I admit, but still. What wound up happening with the, uh, with the first, uh, the first Batgirl series in New 52 was quite a lot of editorial pressure. And uh, they really, really, really wanted to tie the killing joke in with her story arc for a long time. 
and well, they finished that story arc, but then a new a new creative team took over, and uh, they decided to go in a different direction with it. So what they did was they had Barbara Gordon accidentally burn her apartment or or, or something down, and uh, her costume and stuff went with it. So she had to make herself a, a new outfit out of stuff she bought at a vintage shop, and that's why she has a new costume and all. Right. All right. Basically, the new series, uh, the new Batgirl series basically exists in a freaking va- vacuum because nothing that happened before it matters at all anymore. So, it, yeah, I, 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 I like it. It's a, it's a fun series. Oh, here we go. Now, here's a set piece. You want to talk about set pieces? This is the granddaddy of them all. It looks kind of just like a, oh, I've got to swing over there kind of thing, right? No, Deadpool has set light charges or whatever, and they're about to go boom! And then we're going to have a problem. It's kind of good ass, though. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Owl Dragon. Always noticing the most important elements of a superhero. Well, I mean, you stayed on it for so long. I didn't have a choice. I couldn't swing. Sure. Whatever. Let's just keep swinging. I, ha- I have to admit, though. I didn't actually make it to uh, the safe point in time, so you're gonna see me completely eat shit here. I like how your your web just went straight through the pipe there. Yeah, it happens. Ooh. Oh, speaking of, uh, you, you guys seen the um, the Deadpool movie adverts, right? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Badass, smartass, great ass. <laughs> 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 I, I'll be honest, I think it looks pretty good. I think it will, at the very least, be fun, if the schlocky kind of fun, which, let's be honest, is Deadpool anyway. And Ryan Reynolds is giving his damnness. He got fucked over in the Wolverine movie. That was garbage. Oh, it's the Merc with the mouth. What should we do? Let's fucking staple his mouth shut and give him fucking Baraka blades and, like, laser eyes. Uh, that's Fox for you. <laughs> At least there's actually somebody kind of directing the film who actually seems to care about Deadpool, and obviously Ryan Reynolds seems to really care about Deadpool. He basically is Deadpool. Yeah. Which is, like, really, really cool to see. And speaking of, like, other superheroes, I don't think he really kind of sued Hal Jordan in um, Green Lantern. I think he may have been, like, better for uh, Kyle Rayner. That's just me, though. I remember this part. This is the, the this is the most ridiculous thing so far. <laughs> They're hopping across a ship that's being carried on a tidal wave. All right, I don't got a lot of tiles. Let's get to the point. Oh, good one. Work on him, Peter. Work on him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about Peter. He, he's like he's got a sense of humor, but at the same time, he's also intentionally written as a dork. Yeah, yeah. That's why I love Ultimate Spidey. Actually, oh, I love this. Look, well, watch this. Peter's telling him about the fragment powers, and it's a fake. <laughs> Deadpool's one, two, and three. Oh God, no! One was bad enough. Now it's Deadpool's. <laughs> But you know, fucking Shadow Clone Jutsu is just the perfect superpower for Deadpool. <laughs> it fits so well. This is just a really fun boss fight. Basically, each of the three Deadpools takes one aspect of the main Deadpool. Like, one has knives, one shoots his guns, and another, I believe, like throws bombs. And they're like, if you defeat them in a particular order, you uh, beat a challenge. But I'm honestly just doing it in what comes first. First come, first served. Ah, uh, yep. That sounds like the smart way to go. It is a pretty unique boss compared to the first encounter with Deadpool, though. And the, the heart-shaped formation of bombs is just perfect. <laughs> so what do you think about the crazy extremeness of these, this level set pieces, Hell Dragon? I thought this was a pretty good level. Yeah, yeah, you know, like jumping while across to avoid the tidal waves, doing the boat thing. It's just a really nice original level, just kind of all around. You don't really see a, sh- a lot of shit like this in other video games, so I gotta give it props. It's just like there's a, a streak of fun running throughout the ultimate levels in Shatty Dims, and I just wish 2099 was as fun, even if it is kind of like, you know, dystopian future. And I get it, they have to be kind of edgy and whatnot, but it's just not as fun as Ultimate. Sorry, that's just me. I don't want you guys to, like, come away from this thinking that I dislike, or, like, all of us dislike the more serious type of comics. Like, I love Batman, 
I love, you know, heroes of that ilk, and even storylines of that kind. It's just that I prefer the Spider-Man stuff more, and I love that Deadpool was his own cheerleader. <laughs> well, only Deadpool could be the cheerleader for Deadpool, because, I mean, who else loves Deadpool that much? Seriously. <laughs> But you know, even even discounting talk of balance in humor because this had to be more toned down or whatever, I just find the overall humor in this level more clever than what than what the Deadpool game tried. Yeah. Like maybe the fact that it had to be toned down is part of why it was so clever because they had to put more thought into its execution. But exactly, limitations promotes creativity. Another successful mission. You get a high rate. Oh, Madam Webb, you, you, well, we're just a terrible Aren't influence on you, I guess. Um, just one thing. How do I get home? Oh, shit. <laughs> Didn't think about that, <laughs> did you, Peter? <laughs> nah, you're too busy in pain factor. Oh, man. That was good. That was a really fun level. That, that was yeah, so fun. Yeah. I don't even care that I got a silver overall. It's cool. I could have spent more time collecting emblems. That's not what the playthrough is about. It's fine. It's fine. Ah, silver's better than I did. I think I, I think I got a bronze on this level because I spent too long faffing around. Hello, Stanley. He's here. He's always here. You can't get rid of him. And I think, at this point, this is as far as I've played into the game, so I'm going to have to either uh, get myself a, another copy of the game or watch a Let's Play before we do any more. Or be in a Let's Play and have your you know reactions be like first time kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe. Although, I do remember this part. <sighs> like, he, he's not fucking around anymore. He's coming to Madam Web's house. He's like... I'll kill the old crone if you don't give me, like, the pieces of the fragment or collect them for me. She just looks more annoying than anything. Oh, Mysterio here in my parlor. This is not Crash. This is not... This is just shocking awful is what this is. Oh, Mysterio. You are such a dork in Spider-Man 2. But we're out of time now, guys. We'll see you next time for the start of Act 3 of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions.